Oh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome to the mental house with me, your illustrious host, Khadija. You know, some of y'all out there, y'all know who y'all are, uh, have a certain mindset. I might have been one of these people too, so don't think that you were by yourself. And we might have cared, shared the uh, opinion that somebody, you know, that looks like their life is just so perfect uh, that they can't, you know, they must have had it easy. Um, and who comes to mind in terms of uh, black women who represent like that, or especially like uh, Sonia Curry, Beyonce's mom, Tina knows, you know, those type of women, a lot of us stereotype off the bat, tell the truth and shame the devil now, because I'm getting ready to hit home for a lot of y'all. Y'all might not want to admit it, um, but you talk about it at the dinner table, just like those other folks talk about certain things at the dinner table. We do too. So sometimes we gather opinions by the way people look, you know, if they're cute or if they're handsome and, you know, just things that, that are really shallow uh, for, for that matter. Uh, and we think that they don't experience some of the same things that we do, like racism or hatred, and things like that. They don't have no hard not stories, you know, because their lives look too perfect. Well, I thought I'd... um. Shed some light, uh, light on uh, Sonia Curry, mother of one of the most famous basketball players on the planet, Stephen, of course, who plays for the Golden State Warriors. Um, and her other son plays for the Philadelphia 76ers, Seth. Um, yet she did an article with Mark J. Spears for Undefeated. And with some would assume that she's a bit much older than her 50 probably five years old, uh, five, 55 year old discussing another person from a bygone era, but that's not the case. Curry spoke out about the racism that she experienced as a child and teen growing up in heavily segregated and racist, heavily racist, Radford, North Carolina. She said, I had to be uh, the Best to force them to play with me, Curry said, of the role sports played in helping her avoid overt racism in high school. Until that point, her experiences with overt racist acts can only be described as harrowing, even dangerous. Uh, but competing in volleyball, basketball, and track and field safeguarded Curry from the rampant racism at her high school, enabling her to focus on her studies with ambitions of becoming the first in her family to go to college. Her aspiration for higher education in some ways could even be viewed as an act of defiance against inequality. This is what attracted me to this article because this is my mama's favorite saying. Shout out to you, mama. Norma Jean, I love you, girl. Shout out to you. What God has for you, God has for you. Nothing can block it. Hmm. My mama's favorite saying, I'm a first generation college graduate. It wasn't an expectation that I would even go to college, period. I made it my own personal competition that any white person next to me wasn't going to be better than I was. I was going to watch them take the classes that they take because no one is telling me what to take, and I'm going to take the same classes. That's how, actually, I ended up in college. Now the world also uh, knows from 
which parent her famous son got his strong headed gene. Uh, I don't know. Both of them pretty uh, tenacious. Curry's t tenacity carried her to acceptance at Virginia Tech, where she played volleyball, met the man she would later marry, retired NBA player Dale Curry, and earned a degree in education. But what Curry had to overcome to attain those opportunities shows truly what a special woman she is. Lessons from the not-so-distant past. Sonia grew up in the kind of poverty and disenfranchisement that forced kids to walk miles to school that they wanted to attend. To her, this was normal. At age 11, Curry, serving as scorekeeper at a local softball game, witnessed a Klansman cloaked in white hood sitting on top of a white horse ride up to the field that set a cross on fire. A fight broke out. The Klan had hoped to run away the mostly black team for which Curry's mother played. But her mother's team was not intimidated, choosing instead to raise their bats to scare off the races rather than run themselves. After Sonia and Dale were married, Curry recalled another striking experience with racism under then Hornets owner George Shin. Sounds like the, maybe the dude from the Clippers. Huh? Um, the owner called in another player, a white guy player who dated black women and said, we drafted you. We know who you like to date. But we just want to tell you to be really careful about letting people see because Dale Curry is married to a white woman and we don't know how people are going to take them either. The player was like, you are not going to believe what they just said. I was like, what? Just the assumption of what I look like as a fair-skinned African-American woman and all that. Yes, I admit Sonia, and there's a lot of us that thought that, although they might not be honest enough to admit it, I will. Um, but I'm so glad to read the story about you. When Curry felt her children were old enough, she began telling them stories of her childhood. So the two boys, the youngest child, daughter Sedell, would understand that the advantages they enjoyed had not been available to her when she was young. I never had to live it, per se, but I definitely understood, says Steph. You could see it in her eyes when she talked about it. Curry also made sure her kids saw their own eyes where and how she grew up. If they ever got too big for their britches or teetered into ingratitude, they would have the indelible in their minds and the images of the poverty in which their beloved mother was reared. She always took us back home to where she grew up, said middle child Seth, who plays for the, um, at that time, Portland Trailblazer. We saw the environment. It instilled our core values in us. She is the main reason we are the way we are today. She raised us on faith and to be grateful for everything. Well, for that, I would like to say big ups to you, Sonia. And uh, thank you for sharing that little piece of yourself with us. Because as black people, we can be just as racist against one another as anybody. And I think that thinking that because people are light-skinned or Creole or uh, what you consider mixed, bi or biracial, that they actually had it easier than anybody else. It's just plain wrong. And it's to miss it. So, I hope that um, y'all learn something and can admit something to yourselves today. I'd like to know how y'all feel. Have y'all ever been prejudiced against somebody judging before the fact? Or looking at somebody and judging them because of their light skin or their behavior, I mean, their light skin, their nature. 
Have you ever done it? Hmm. Well, just ask him. So with that being said, if you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and share. And if you got the courage, answer that question. Bye-bye.